This is so exciting because I'm interviewing the interviewer. So, yes, welcome to Morgana Radio, where I, your host, Morgana Ray, interview the world's most fascinating thought leaders on money, love, and magic. And I am more excited about this interview and nervous than any other interview that I've done. Yes, you see, because I'm interviewing my own coach. I am interviewing the reason that there is Morgana Radio at all. And ugh, you, Alex, you, you can share like, you know, your resume stuff. And I'm just going to tell you my experience of Alex is I think I first saw him on a stage way back in 2005 when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And he is brilliant. He made a huge impression on me. This is the thing that I love. One of the things that I love about Alex is like the stuff he teaches is so like shake you obvious, but it's the shake you obvious stuff that you aren't doing. <laughs> and, and I remember the first thing was that I learned from him was like have an ask campaign, like ask your people what they want and then you can give it to them. And it took me a while to get around to doing that and it changed my world. And this is what he does. And I, year after year after year, I just send him more money and I go to more of his events because I love to watch the way he works and the way he teaches. And then the content is almost the frosting. So, what he's sharing today is gold. And by the way, he's like, he's like the billionaire maker, <laughs> you know, the, his, his, the people who actually do what he says, these are the top of the top successful people. So this is the problem that we're focusing on today. The topic is how to get your message to billions, billions with a B. That's not a typo. And the problem is most startups and veteran entrepreneurs think that the answer to all your problems is more clients, bigger lists, more clicks, and they're just throwing money at that. And the problem with that approach is it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. It's missing that one thing has to happen before before you get clients and clicks and lists and money and all that kind of stuff. And that thing is exposure. People have to know you, see you, love you before any of the other good stuff happens. And so what Alex is teaching is really the fastest, easiest, most economical, most impactful way to get huge exposure, dramatically increase your reach and your visibility without breaking your bank. In fact, most of the stuff that he's teaching is free. And, you know, take it over, Alex. I'm so grateful to have you here. Morgana, thank, thank you. you. I remember I being remember in a mastermind, mastermind and asking you if you had a show every week and you said no. I said, why not? And Morgana Radio was born as the seed to the roots that took fruit. And here we are. Beautiful, beautiful. So... What is the specific incident? Like, dude, you were the instant teleseminar king. And honestly, I have made millions of dollars from teleseminars now. So now you have focused a little bit differently. And what started you on this path of what you call push button influence as your preferred marketing method? Uh, my partner, whom you know, Steve Olsher and I have launched this premise, this concept called push button influence, which doesn't mean push button profits or push button money. It means influence. And influence is the seed that takes root, that provides a trunk and branches and leaves that provide the fruit. And the reason we call it push button influence is because anyone who's watching me and Morgana right now had to push a button to get here, whether it's subscribe or whether they pushed a, a link button, you could push the like button, subscribe, rate, review, broadcast, record. We've identified somewhere between 40 to 50 buttons that all influencers in new media online get their tribes to push. And the more buttons they push, that's called engagement. So 
push button influence means when you get others to push buttons in in your favor, then they will discriminate in your favor and you're just one button push away from a fortune, but it's understanding how to set yourselves up. So the, the specific incident for me was when I was deciding how do I get myself out there? And I thought in 1999, the best way to do that is by interviewing other influencers. And so I started doing teleseminars and I still can't shake off the teleseminar guy. <laughs> I mean, I'm still there. I made uh, eight figures through one course that people laughed at because it was all online. It was all through teleseminars and it was teaching people how to make money through teleseminars. And um, the proof of concept was as soon as I got my first student at Teleseminar Secrets, I already proved the concept. You can make money through teleseminars. So um, it, was a, it was a great run and it's one of the, the four big um, business runs I've had so far, and I'm hoping PBI is the fifth one. And what happened in 1999 is I thought, okay, I want to start interviewing people in the Nightingale Conant um, catalog. So mm -hmm. I started just flipping through the pages and I knew all of them because I'd, I'd read up and had studied all of them from Dennis Waitley to Mark Victor Hansen to Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, and you know, the list goes on and on, Wayne Dyer, you know who they are. Uh, a lot in the personal development space, a lot in the marketing space and a lot in the human potential space. And so I was just doing hit and miss and interviewing folks and edifying them. And that was my interview show. And that's where this whole concept of citizen reporter came about. Like I'm just interviewing them. I do an interview every single week and um, they thought I was a good interviewer. And so I, I was somewhere between Barbara Wal Walters and uh, Larry King. You know, I was a little bit more heart centered than Larry was. And I was a little bit more um, logically centered. I wouldn't make my guests cry like Barbara Walters. So, so, you know, somewhere in between the feminine and the masculine approach. And I got labeled as a good interviewer, which is good because anyone can be a great interviewer. You know, you're, you're a leader from behind when you interview. That's, that's what you're doing here. And so um, fast forward to a tragedy that happened on September 11, 2001. And I'm in Orinda, California, which is in the Bay Area where I am right now. I just moved from New York. My newborn son, Gabriel, my then wife and my then in-laws, we're at the house and we're seeing two buildings come down in Manhattan. And uh, that's where I used to live in, in Manhattan. And uh, Gabriel, my son, was born in Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. So we had just moved about nine months before. And when those buildings came down, that tragedy had a business impact for me not in the same way that it did all the Nightingale Conan speakers like the Canfields and the Mark Victor Hansons and the Bob Proctors and all those guys. Their businesses went down because all their speaking gigs got canceled. If you remember, every, you know, all the flights were no longer active. The, the airways were completely shut down. But business boomed for the teleseminar market. And I was already in their wake of, you know, consciousness. And they came to me to interview them again and again and again. And for the next three years, I became the interviewer f as a result of, of the tragedy where all the focus now was on, hey, let's get our content out virtually. And there was a demand on me where I actually got paid to interview folks and they would help build my list through their list as a result of all the focus being on their interview. So that is the seed that flopped into the roots that turned into the trunk, the branches, the leaves, and then ultimately the fruits of, of where we are today. There was no YouTube then, there was no Facebook, no Twitter, no, no LinkedIn, none of that stuff. But there was a Google and Google wasn't a very grown up person back then that didn't even have their um, initial public offering. So Google was just in its infancy. People didn't use Google that much back then, if you can believe that. And Apple was a disaster. Steve Jobs was you know, upset because he'd been fired. And I mean, people don't even remember that stuff. It's only 15 years ago. So that was the beginning. And that eventually turned into where I thought, instead of having lead magnets, ethical bribes in the, in the form of free product, instead of creating websites that are offers and you have these squeeze pages where you're holding people hostage, instead of doing all that, why not just deliver content as if it's the product for sale, but do it for free on an editorial basis. And if you do it week after week after week, you can make offers inside of that show 
where people are incubating inside of their uh, relationship with you. And that was the beginning of what I would consider to be push button influence today. And, and that's my side of the story. Steve, of course, has another story. Well, what I love about this, and it made perfect sense as I've gotten to know you better working with you privately, is that you built your eight figure empire from service and generosity, uh, serving others and serving your audience. And so you really kind of created this model. You're such a pioneer in the industry. And then knowing you personally, I, you know, initially I thought you'd be just another one of those internet marketer guys and you just lead from so much heart and, you know, you teach people to market by acknowledgement and kindness and generosity and and that's by the way why i wanted to share you with my tribe because the whole idea of making money by putting love first you model that you live that every day well it it requires human beings to make an impact and um, all you have to do is model which is one of our formulas we have the m3 process which is a process we teach model market monetize in that order and uh, modeling is who are you going to model which influencers are you going to model because they already have the recipe they 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 have the result and the evolution to that result so just study their biography study how they evolve not just what they got now which is a mistake study where they came from and then you can reverse engineer the path that was created for them and what i've observed is that all of them had ups and downs. All of them have had um, uh, enthusiasm going in the wrong direction, and and all of them have overcome, you know, adversity. But we only look at the result, and I think that that's a ma mistake. Looking at the evolution of that result is, you know, what's the what makes the most impact. So when you talk about engagement, and it being engaged means getting a click, opening up an email, getting comments resharing a tweet that's that's engagement forget the size of the list or how many facebook fans you got or how many followers you got on twitter it's like how engaged is the list I'll, i'd rather have ten thousand engaged people than a hundred hundred thousand disengaged people well we're engaging people and mm -hmm. so to get engagement you need to push a button and so the more button pushes you get the more love you're getting and I only masquerade as a marketer. I'm really a human potential teacher masquerading, you know, as a marketer. I don't even consider myself an internet marketer, which is like treason if, if my buddies saw this. But uh, <laughs> I guess it's it's safe to say here. And, you know, you get second guessed sometimes and it hurts, but it doesn't matter if you keep showing up the same way, you know, the heart will come through. And as an example, our mutual friend, Noah St. John, how do I know he's a mutual friend? Because I met him at your events back when he was your student and teaching your stuff as a sub coach. And now he is one of those big Nightingale Conant gurus too, by basically doing what you're teaching today. So I, you've been, you've been like indicating a little bit about what push button influence is. Do you have like a, take home definition yeah. for push button influence yeah um push button influence pivots the platforms that make people influential you know when when you're going to write a book the first question your publisher if you go traditional or even if you're self-publishing the first thing that you need to have consideration about is do i have a platform what does that mean do i have influence if you're a speaker and you're giving speeches which means you can be an author as well or you could be a chiropractor or a dentist or a CPA, or um, you can be in any kind of service profession. You know, it doesn't matter. You, you, you can be a mechanic, but if you use information and public speaking and, and books to get more exposure for your business, then, you know, you could be giving speeches in at trade associations and events. Well, you need to have a platform. You need a speaking platform and then a trainer. Okay. A trainer, if you have a workshop or a seminar, you need a platform to fill the event. And so in the old model, what used to happen is you gave a bunch of speeches, you wrote a bunch of books, you had a bunch of seminars and trainings, and then maybe, maybe 
the platform that you got, which was the Holy Grail, was a talk show. You know, now Oprah Winfrey went this route with not books, but reporting, you know, a, a news reporting. She used to cry and weep on, the, on a news show. They go, no, that doesn't work. So they gave her a talk show in Chicago. Donnie Deutsch went this route with um, entrepreneurship. And, you know, there's a lot of other people who've, who've gone similar routes where they, they were a best-selling author, best-selling speaker, great seminar trainer. And then the path to the platform was, hey, I got a show. Well, guess what? That's switched. It's pivoted to where you can start with the show on Blab, Periscope, Google Hangouts, uh, and on a webinar, teleseminar, any kind of platform, uh, Facebook Live. And if you do it weekly, chances are, if you do it for 12 weeks, which is about a season, 12, 13 weeks, it's good enough for summer, spring, fall, and winter, right? Then it's good enough for you to create a book as a table of contents or create a keynote speech or have the fodder for a workshop. So now the show creates the content or curates it for the best-selling book, the best-selling speech, and the best-selling workshop. So we have a C3 process in the uh, PBI method, which you know, and that is curate content first, then create content, then connect content, meaning connect it to all the other new media sources like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and repurposing it on article directories so that you're actually connecting in the different formats where people can see, such as YouTube and Google+, Plus, et cetera. So the, the key is to use your weekly show not to generate income, but as a curation platform so that you can create what people are responding to. Hey, I love that. See, that's where the M3 process came from. That's where the C3 process came from. That's where all this content comes from, from doing shows again and again. And it's almost like testing. And you, you go to heaven without the inconvenience of dying. <laughs> I, wrote, <laughs> I wrote a book, Alexisms, just based on having a weekly teleseminar show, which now is now a Google Hangout show every Friday. So um, that's what's happened. We've pivoted the platform process from going from best-selling author, speaker, trainer to show to now it's show. Then that turns into best-selling author, speaker, and trainer or workshop trainer. And that's the best way I can tell you that these are the goods. This is what we're really talking about. And as long as you know how to create the show, how to deal with the technology of the show, just like Blab right now, then um, even sloppy success is better than perfect mediocrity. Beautiful. So, you know, I love to talk about money. And you've done all of it, the speaking, the training, the books. How much does that cost? How much does the old way cost in dollars, realistically? Well, you think about it. The old way is you write a book, which is torture, literally. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. see your family. You don't see your spouse. If you have an ex-spouse, you don't see the ex-spouse. Maybe that's not so bad. But, you know, you don't how get much, this. How much do people actually even pay you to know, get their book to number one? First of all, it takes a lot of time. And to get to number one, if you want to manipulate and Jimmy rig the process, it will cost over $300,000. I know over 70 people who have done it, okay? And they have the money to do it. Is that feasible? Yes. Is it possible? For most people, no, it's not. So that's hard. Now let's talk about speeches. You got to um, fly, drive, travel to places, living out of suitcases, and you don't even know if the speech is going to sell. Chances are um, you're, you're not going to give a fee paid speech. You're going to be a multi-speaker platform with other speakers. If you don't know how to enroll people, it's going to cost you money and the embarrassment and the rejection of no one in the audience moving, right? <laughs> you want them to go to the back table and they're just sitting like this, right? And so that is not fun. And then having a seminar, this is my favorite, all right? Imagine Imagine it's it's worse than the restaurant business. Imagine working for half a year creating content and trying to fill a room. And it comes down to the day. You show up and you were supposed to have 500 people there. You told other speakers there'd be 1,000 people there. 25 people show up. You have to fulfill it, which means you're going to work your ass off for three days at least. And you've lost your shirt along the way. So what does it cost? I think you can you can call that five figures easy lost done <sighs> over. Now I'm not saying those things are bad. I make money doing those things, but it's not the way to start. The way to start 
is what we're doing right here. Blab has its own network. There are people coming into this Blab right now that don't even know us because they're coming in from the Blab network. And this is the future. This is the direction most people with these platforms are going. Periscope is no different. And people on this show can blab it out to Twitter and tweet it out. They can blab it out on their Facebook and their timeline and bring more people in. This is using the power of social networking. So this is free. So for example, if I engaged and enrolled someone and hooked their mind and heart and said, yeah, you know, I, I think I believe this guy, you know, what's this hat he's wearing? George Lucas gave me this hat, by the way. It's, it's dirty. I haven't even washed it. You know, it's a, sorry, it's one of those, it looks like the hat in, in, uh, in Jaws or something because it, it hasn't been washed, but you know, he actually gave this hat to me. So it's my good luck hat. If someone believes in what I'm saying, then that ends up becoming an opportunity to have a lifelong student because I don't like losing students all from a free, no cost blab broadcast, what we're doing now. So this, these are the seeds that lead to the roots that lead to the fruits ultimately is having this done uh, weekly. And even if no one shows up, at least you have the content that you can connect and make it available to the rest of the world on the net. So this is really obvious for authors and coaches and people who'd be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this live. What about, you know, offline people? You mentioned like, you know, plumbers and, you know, the muggles, the real world people. Why is why is this relevant to people in other industries? Well, the way to stand out now. The, the formula that's been around for about 150 years called ADA, A-I-D-A, the first A stands for attention, I stands for uh, interest, D stands for desire, and the second A stands for action. In the old days, um, and the, the formula is still valid, in the old days, um, it was about 25% of energy spent on all four of those letter, letters, 25% attention, 25% interest, 25% desire, and 25% action, just pushing or pulling people to take action. Those days are gone. It takes about 80 to 90% of your energy just to get attention. And then you can just use the rest of whatever percentage is left over for the interest, desire, and action, right? But once you get attention, then that is the most difficult thing to get in this over-communicated, over-distracted, over-marketed new media environment we're in. Well, you know, 5,000 5, advertisements a day over, I think, 1.25 million a year. So you're not competing with your competitor. You're competing with Starbucks, McDonald's, Burger King, Enterprise, Rent-A-Car, Dell Computer, Apple Computer, you know, the list goes on. So how can a plumber or a bookkeeper or a dentist, a chiropractor, or any service professional with a local business? How can a restaurant, right? How can any of those folks, or maybe the president of a chamber of commerce or a member of the chamber of commerce, how can they benefit from having a weekly show? Well, first of all, they can have it from one of these, which is called a mobile phone. They can just do it from here, okay? And it doesn't have to be an hour or half an hour. It could be 10 minutes. Number two, they can do it from their computer or from their laptop. But what they must do is do it repeatedly, week after week, like going to synagogue, mosque, church, or any spiritual um, location of worship. They have to be able to worship their tribe, their herd, their flock, their peeps, whatever you want to call them. I call them my tribe. Week after week, even if two people show up, okay? Or if you're lucky, 3,000 people showing up because over time it builds up. So, if they have something to say about their topic of influence, which we call the TOI, then a plumber can have a weekly show. And if a plumber has a weekly show, is that plumber just by saying you got a weekly show, do, does that plumber have new influence? I think so. Because Steve and I, my partner and I have a new saying, every business is show business. <laughs> and, and every business is a show business. So, you know, why not treat it that way? Why not make every single push of a button an event? And so I believe that true marketing intimacy can be had more when you're interacting like this, because so far I'm looking at the blab. We have 
three times as many people now than we did 10 minutes ago. Okay, so we're not going south, we're going north. That doesn't usually happen. So that means we're on the right path, I hope. <laughs> so mm -hmm. bottom line is if you are a service professional with a local business, we've had students who just have a weekly show. And even though the 99% of the people that watch their show will not bring them more money, the 1% in their local area, let's say a 10 mile radius for an ice cream shop, that one mile radius uh, or 10 mile radius will get more business into that storefront because now they're acting local, but they're thinking and feeling global. So if you have half an hour a week, why not have a weekly show? And the weekly show is nothing more than it could be a table of contents in a forthcoming book. You know what, how to make the right decisions in picking a contractor or a dentist or a chiropractor or a plumber. What are the things that can go wrong? Okay. Um, we have, um, you want me to dive into just, I'll take one minute to just talk about a very easy way to have six weeks of content in one day. Yes. Okay. Th this is called an editorial calendar. Everybody has it in the magazine, newspaper, and television business in old media, traditional media. Very few people have it in new media because they don't take things seriously. But this is what we can learn from the grand grandfathers and grandmothers of our lineage, which is old media, TV, uh, magazines, and newspapers. So let's say you're a plumber, okay? And you have five tips. You have five tips on how to hire the right plumber. Because if you hire the wrong plumber, you're going in the wrong direction enthusiastically. It's costly and it just won't work, okay? Especially when you have that, um, when you have that emergency. And water does not like wood or tile or anything valuable in the house. I know, I've, I've had leaks before and we've hired the wrong plumber. So let's say you're a plumber and you happen to have five tips on how to hire the right plumber. And let's say those five tips, every plumber knows. Now, what's the difference? You're the only plumber revealing those tips on a show. You're the only plumber on YouTube and LinkedIn and Google Plus and on Blab. You're the only plumber that has articles out there that you've transcribed from your mouth because all you need as a plumber to be a talk show host is a message, a mouth, and a mouse. That's all you need. So you decide I have five tips on how to hire the right plumber. And so you decide to have a six week. Okay, now say the word six. How many weeks? Six. Six. You have a six week editorial calendar. Alex, you just said five tips. How do I have a six week editorial calendar? Okay, so we're going to have six 10 minute shows that you're going to record on one day and you're going to release them one week at a time on iTunes, on Stitcher, on your Google Plus account, wherever. It doesn't matter. If you take the course with us, we can show you what to do and how to do it. But you're going to have six shows all done in one day. They're 10 minutes each and it could take you two hours to record because, you know, you finish one, you stop, you take a break, you finish one, you stop, you take a break. All right. So then you write the five tips. Good. So the first show are all about the five tips. So that's going really wide on each tip and shallow. So tip number one, how to find the right plumber, two, three, four, and five. That took 10 minutes. Stay tuned for next week because we're gonna dive deep into tip number one. So you just have the first week done. Actually you did all six weeks on one day so that you don't have to work anymore. But then on week two, you go deep on tip number one, that's 10 minutes. Week number three, you go deep on tip number two. And then you go to all the way to week number six, that's like over a month and it's only 10 minutes. And that's tip number five going deep. So the first show is going shallow and wide about the five tips, if you go five tips. Now, if you go seven tips, then you really have eight weeks. <laughs> if you go 12 tips, then you got 13 weeks. I like five because it's simple. I can count them on my hands. I'm on my toes, you know, and it's a lot easier. So I start with five when we recommend our students to go five. Now, what's what's the key here? They go, Alex, it's only 10 minutes. How am I going to get this exposure? Because that's what push button influence gets people. Exposure, marketing reach, and, and visibility. Here's the way you get exposure. You're curating the content from all the stuff that's out there on Google all the stuff that's on there with blogs and what other plumbers have written. 
Okay, so you're actually borrowing the authority from other plumbers or other people in the plumbing business. Great. So that's called curating. That's C number one. Then you're going to create the content on one day so that you, you remain, have a sense of an assembly line or this continuity. So you're in the zone and your heart and your head is there and your hands are there and you're ready to go. So you just pump out six shows just like that. They're nice and fresh. And within two and a half hours, you got six weeks of content. I hope this is making sense. That's called create. So then what do you do the rest of the six weeks? Well, for 30 to 45 minutes a day. What is that? Less than four hours a week. What is that? 168 hours a week, right? Four of those hours. That's about 3% of your week, okay? So does your business deserve 3 to 5% of your week? I think so. So what you do is you take a transcription of that show. You have the audio. If you've done it in, in video, then you have the video as well. And that's where you start connecting on your LinkedIn pages. If you have one, Facebook, Twitter, article directories, and the list goes on and on. And you become a, a guest blogger on other people's blogs. You become a guest host or a co-host or an interview on other people's interviews. We have a directory of 241 influencers. It's a directory that I think you're going to even give away in each category of superstars, of bloggers and podcasters and, and um, web TV show hosts. And that's what you do for the rest of the time. So most people are always focused on creating. They write the book, you know, two years. Ah, forget that. Curate, create. That's maybe 10%. 20, busting. That's too much. But let's say it's 20%. The 80% of the time you're connecting. And that's how you create this massive, massive reach of a net so that you're not fishing with a fishing rod, you're fishing with a net and you're getting lots and lots of fish. Only you're not killing them, you're making them live. You're putting them in your tank. And that's where you will never die a best kept secret. That's what you don't want to die as. You don't want to leave earth as a best kept secret. Alex, I have the best content, that's what I hear. Great, connect it. Alex, my content is better than that person. That person has so much more reach than I do. Yeah, because they're a better connector. Nikola Tesla, whined and bitched and moaned about Thomas Edison's reach. But Nikola Tesla hung out with the wrong guy, George Westinghouse. He was smarter than Edison. He worked for Edison, but he died in mediocrity and also in poverty for no reason. Don't be like him as a connector. Be like him as a creator and curator, genius, but be like Edison as a connector. And then that way you won't be revered posthumously. Tesla, everyone knows Tesla now because of the Tesla car and the batteries, but I don't want to be remembered a hundred years from now. I want, I want to be remembered now. So don't die a best kept secret. My partner, Steve Olsher came up with that. And I think it's really worthy of your devotion to consider. Well, and full disclosure for everybody listening or people watching the video at MorganaRadio.com, I have been taking this class for the last three months. So, you know, I, I'm seeing the impact in my own business. But what's fun is I'm seeing other people. So we have one woman, I'm going to out her cat. She has some like weird niche that I don't even really understand about water. And she's been doing this. And now like all these government and non-governmental organizations are taking her seriously. She's getting offered jobs. She has kind of gone from this, uh, prophetess screaming to the wind to a really serious player in just a few months taking this class. You know, what's interesting about Kat is Kat is, is one of what we call our hardship heroes. She's really had a hard time because she thought she had to create a business for herself and create a whole marketing organization. And I told her, no, have your show get you hired by a corporation. Kat is one of those people who wants to get hired by corporate America. Most people are trying to leave corporate America. What's great about it is having your own show. Every business is show business is she gets to get hired by the people who have lots of money on a topic that is going to be very serious, especially when we don't have any water. There's all there's, there's over two and a half billion people that can't drink the water that's outside of where they live because it's not sweet, meaning it's not drinkable. Imagine, okay, once that water is not available to you, okay, we're in deep, you know what? We're in the Shawshank Redemption Tunnel. 
and we, there's no way out. So she has a great topic and her show is raising the eyebrows of corporate America so they can hire her. And she's in Washington, D.C., the great place to be, especially, you know, these days. And, you know, she is, she had been hurting because she thought she had to create this marketing company like like we have. We don't have to do that. Just get enough influence. So someone hires you, you go, wow, she's got a show. No one else has a show about water. She's got a show. Let's hire her. And this citizen reporter ends up becoming one of the top influencers on the topic of water. And it all started with a simple weekly show like we're doing. Well, she's ahead of her time because it's going to be the biggest topic in the world in the direction that we're heading. Right. So and she got in early because she did this. So what if? The people watching this or listening to this took the how many the took your push button influence program. What would their life look like a month, three months, a year from today? Well, the best answer is I don't know, but my best guess is the same thing that's happening with our existing students because we have tested this with beta students who paid us not beta money, but good money to go through it. In fact, I'm practicing my positioning and my verbiage on this show. So thank you for that because practice makes permanent as my friend Keith Cunningham says, who's one of my mentors. And so what you can expect in 30 days, if you do a show every week, like we'll teach you, is that within a month, you're gonna know whether you've chosen the right topic of influence. And if it feels right, if you're if it's aligned with your heart, your head and your hands, right, the head, the heart and the hands, they all have to be aligned. OK, your heart can be in it, but sometimes your your heart can send you in the wrong direction enthusiastically. Right. So all three have to be aligned. So you'll know if you have your topic of influence. Now, let me tell you, the moment you have found your topic of influence, you have arrived. It's almost like nirvana on earth on the topic of what you stand for, what you believe in what your core value is. So that by itself is worth the ticket and, and the price of admission because most people don't know what their topic of influence is. They don't even know what they should be influential on, right? So that's the first thing in 30 days. In 90 days, if you have 12 shows, which um, if you're coached by me and Steve, you're going to have it because we're going to push you. You know, but, you know, The only reason that you wouldn't do it is you're afraid that it, it is going to work and you got no more excuses, right? That's called the fear of success. But the fear of embarrassment is worse than the fear of success or failure. So we're going to out you if you don't do a show per week, no matter how many people are on the show. And it's not making money. It's getting exposure. So in 90 days, you'll have 12 to 13 shows. Now, you will be in the top 10 percentile of all podcasters, web TV sh uh, show hosts and bloggers, because according to one of our colleagues and many others whom he studied with, John Lee Dumas, who makes over $4 million a year from a standing start starting in the year 2012. Can you imagine? And according to him, most people don't even get past show seven, hmm. right? So if you got to show 13 or show 12, you're already in the top 10%. 90% of the people quit. Why? Because they're pinning their hopes on the wrong thing. Oh, I only had 20 visitors. I only had 15 people watching. Who cares who watches live? That content is there forever. If you're on Good Morning America, people are going to miss you live. What you want to be is on Good Morning America online, which is the new media version, so that you have massive reach online. That's where everything happens, right? So in 90 days, you're going to have more than 90% of all people doing this have under our tutelage and our direction. Within a year, what may happen is what happens, you know, for my students and it's it's really annoying and um it's not upsetting but um it's i guess what a good teacher should do and that is i'll get on stage and i'll say okay you're my students now but i want you to be more exposed and visible than i am i want you to be bigger and wealthier and have more marketing reach than i do and then when it actually happens <laughs> it's like ah vision lakani Ryan Dice. I mean, I can just tell you folks who have hired me or been, uh, you know, my clients and then wham, they just went, you know, through the stratosphere. So I think that's the greatest compliment and most annoying thing that can happen to a teacher. But if you go back to the spiritual traditions, that's what a true Lama teacher 
um, maestro in Italy, they call it guide in, in England or tutor. The French call it guru. They call that in India coach in America, you know, whatever you call it. Um, I like Lama. That's what the Tibetans call it. Whatever that person is, um, that's, that's the greatest source of devotion you can give is exceed them. So within a year, I want you to have more than 3000 people a week watching you week after week. And is it possible? It is possible and it can happen. I was surprised personally how easy this is. You know, you know more about a radio started out audio, now it's video, sometimes I stopped. And it didn't matter. I still went to, I think, number two and most new and noteworthy on iTunes because you told me what to do to do that. <laughs> and it just took a few days. So, um, you know, I just, I love cheap and easy, not in my men, but in my business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, you, you're known to do things again and again. I married you for the 16th time and uh, you're pretty good at getting married to death. That That is true, by the way. Yeah, that, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. The, Alex married my husband and I on our 16th wedding in our 12th country. And it's the only, you're the only person who has married us who I've memorized what you said. You said, may our marriage be based on lying, cheating, and stealing. May you lie your heads on the same pillow every night. May you cheat father time and may you steal each other's hearts. And I, and I tear up every time I say that. Thank you. So I believe that action is magical. If you want to have real world, physical, tangible results, you need to take real world, physical, tangible action to let yourself in the universe know that you're serious. So what is the action that our viewers and listeners should take now? Well, the first thing is um, you have a link you can invite them to. And you can type that into Blab. And, you know, before you say yes to any program, you want to vet your trainer. You want to vet your teacher. And in this case, you don't only get to vet me, but you have another one as well. And we're different people. And we respond and we attract different types of people, which is super, super cool. My partner, Steve Olsher, he's actually in the other room right now, eavesdropping and listening to this whole process. Steve, why don't you come here and just say hi really quick. Hi, Steve. We'll see if he can dive in here. We don't have the bandwidth for him to go in to the blab from another section, but he's coming in now. He's from Chicago. He's an oxymoron, and he's he's colder than I am here. It's like sixty five degrees, and it looks like <laughs> it's middle of winter. You know, it's spring. Dude. I'm a rock. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for all the nice words, Alex. That was very <laughs> so. Oh, now Steve is a genius. He, my God, he <laughs> he crushes it. He has a different feel and approach, but a golden heart and super wicked smart. And, and that's the key is what you want is you do you want to partner with people who have different approaches and uh, it works. And so you got to vet your trainer. So what we have done is we are allowing people to put our feet to the fire. So the first piece of what we call content to kind of check this out is we're going to give you a directory that has never been created before. It took us about, well, it took us almost a year to put together, months to to audit and vet, and pff, I don't know how many emails to check these email addresses. And there's 241 of these folks. They're bloggers, podcasters, and uh, new media superstars, which are mostly web TV. I'm in there. And before you reach out to any of them, because they have done for you reach, done for you exposure, done for you visibility. But before you reach out to them, like you wouldn't reach out to Larry King, not knowing anything about him. I don't think you'd even reach out to Howard Stern without knowing much about him, but they have massive reach. So first you want to model them. And in this directory, which Morgana will give you access to inside the blab, just check out what we say, the five questions you should ask yourself, four of the five you should answer yes to. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, the sec second thing is where do you send traffic when you're on someone else's show? Okay, now let's assume you don't have a show because most people don't start with one, right? We don't want that to be a stumbling block. Well, when you get on someone's show, where do you send them? Well, sending them to your squeeze page or landings page or all the marketing speak of the internet marketing world, right? That's wrong because that's called poaching and your guest doesn't want you to sell something on their show. So you have a problem. See, you're on an editorial show 
So you can't sell stuff. Try to do that on TV. You wouldn't do it on a Good Morning America or on CNN or anything else, right? You, you don't pimp or poach an audience because you won't be invited back. You want to be invited back again and again. So where you send them is to what we call an authority site. And an authority site is what we've modeled people like Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income and John Lee Dumas of EO Fire or, or um, all Amy Porterfield or Lewis Howes and all these folks who have massive, massive reach. Now, their email list may not be in the millions, but their audience is in the millions. Email has like 10, 20 percent open rates when you send an email. If you're really lucky, if you're really lucky. Now, during our launch, we have 55 percent open rates. So we're very, very fortunate right now. And with an audience, though, like if you if you get someone to click your like button, that's 100 percent open rate because they get to see your fan page. If they click subscribe on iTunes, 100 percent open rate. So if they come into your Facebook member group, 100 percent open rate, like whatever's being posted, it's open. If you're on someone's Twitter feed, 100 percent open. So what do you want? 100 percent open online or 10 or 20 percent open offline through email. So you want to have an authority website where you send traffic back and yeah, you can capture their email, but you let them kind of, you know, snoop around and what should be on that site, your own web show, your own talk show. Now, Alex, I don't have a talk show. I don't know what to talk about. Good. Then get on other people's shows. We have one student, Heather Havenwood, and she, she's been on over 50 shows and she just gets those recordings and puts that on her authority website. And that's her content. She doesn't even have a talk show. Now I get, I get on her back a little bit, say, come on, man, just have your own talk show. Well, she's busy getting on other people's shows. So you need a site to bring them back. We show you the blueprint on how to do that. And then finally, before someone even makes a decision, we're, we're going to show you how to take the influence quiz because the golden rule is cool. You know, do one to others as you want to be done unto. However, it's hard to influence someone because not everyone's like you. We're going to teach you how to do unto others as they want to be done unto. And this influence quiz is an assessment. It takes about three minutes to take. It comes from the lineage of Carl Jung. And uh, if you're very familiar with Myers-Briggs, um, it's the quadrant model of either being a methodical, a competitive, a spontaneous, and a humanistic. If those words don't mean anything, it will. I, kn I know Morgana, when I look at a, a family picture, my mom's there, my dad's there, my sister, all my nieces and nephews, but I only look for me in the picture. So when people um, get their assessment, they're only curious about their results first. So, you know, you'll be, if, if you come into our funnel, you know, it's the marketing speak, you'll get access to this quiz, find out who you are, and then find out how to interact with other people so that you're not insulting or offending them without the intention. Your, your intention may be pure, but you may insult them because they process information differently. And mm. if those three things, you know, the directory, the authority website blueprint, and learning what to do with your website, and the influence quiz results, if those three don't convince you that the push button influence training is for you, we don't deserve to give you access. And you have no reason to learn from us because we both haven't earned the right to learn from each other. So that's what I would say. Just go through the process and learn and then put our feet to the fire. And believe me, the tables will turn. If you do that and you come on board, you can ask Morgana, I will push you with everything I got because you're never as good as you think you are. You're better and we'll prove it. I want to end with that. I just love that so much. Well, the pregnant pause always helps, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. So I've posted the link in the blab where we're, we're recording. It's also posted at MorganaRadio.com where we have, you know, the iTunes link and, and the video posted. And if you're listening to iTunes, wait until you're done driving. And then get on your computer and download it. Download all this great content. Right now, first, we have the, the 2016 Director of Influencers. Mm -hmm. And I am, you know, a soft, loving, spiritually enlightened, competitive person 
who better be on the list in 2017. I'm, you know, stating That's it our, now. That's what we, I'm going for. <laughs> here's what's really interesting is like we were nervous to putting our own students because we didn't know if they, you know, they wanted to get pounced on. And so um, now we're getting feedback. Okay, how come? You forgot me. No, I didn't forget you, but maybe we'll do an addendum to 2016. So note to self, you got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Oh, thank you so much. This is a great thing to download. My husband was saying, well, isn't everybody going to be going after these people? And yeah, they are. So the thing is, is you want to download it now and do your homework now. You also want to learn from Alex how to do it correctly so that you don't blow that first impression that you only get one of and that you stand out and make it work for you correctly. Awesome. Thank you so much. Love, love, love. Thank you. <laughs> and that concludes another episode of Morgana Radio. Love to all of you. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.